Welcome to What a Creep, the show with Margot Donahue and Sonia Mansfield talking about creeps from the past to the present. This is your quick guide to the biggest creeps, jerks, assholes, and losers, the best of the worst. From two nice ladies who want the world to be a little less creepy. Welcome back to What a Creep. This is Margot Donahue, and my cohort in creepitude, as always, is the amazing Sonia Mansfield. Hey, Sonia. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend, and hello to everybody out there. If this is your first time listening to the show, welcome. We are the show that talks about creeps from the past to the present. What we do is we take turns talking about a creep, and then the other one is tasked to find a non-creep. So this creep is especially creepy today, so I have someone I think is especially not creepy to sort of balance things out. But we appreciate you coming along. And uh, for those of you who have been listening for a while, we have some big news. We are joining a network that's going to be helpful for us to kind of take our show to the next level. We are heading to the show. That's a, that they say in it's baseball. Big news. <laughs> big news. We're going to the show. We're going to the show, which means everybody, you're going to be hearing some ads here and there. Please understand this is a good thing. It's going to, because it's going to give us more resources to take the show to the next level. We want to go on the road when it's not so scary out there. Yes. Not like the Cormac it, McCarthy version of the road, like a real yeah. nice version. Yes, it's a dream. It's our, uh, it is one of our goals to do live shows. And this is a step in that direction. And it's just going to help us find more cohorts, spread the non creepy vibes wherever we go. That's, that's the goal. And y'all have been a part of it from the beginning. And thank you so Fact. much. And I also want to sh- give some shout outs and thank yous really quick. For those of us who left us five star review in iTunes, Steph, birthday girl. Uh, Santa Claus in Indiana. And, Santa Claus? Yeah. And Gerald, good. Thank you all so much for leaving us five-star review, reviews. Excuse me. We really appreciate that. And also, we have a few new Patreon members. We have Priscilla, Calvin, and oh, Sarah. My, I'm all, was it my son? No. Uh, that would surprise me. Oh, it's another Calvin. So welcome <laughs> so much. Uh, we have the first three seasons of our show on the Patreon wall. We put out two bonus episodes a month. We put out a newsletter. The next yep. newsletter will go out Feb 1st. Yep. And that's at Patreon. And just to wave, you can follow us on social media really quick. We do have a basic Facebook page. We don't really use it. It's a place where people like to go to complain about our language. We use salty language in this show. So, Fuck you. So remember that when you're taking care of that as you're moving forward. We have a And prim- that won't fucking change no matter what network we're on. <laughs> we have a private Facebook group, which is really an excellent place to hang out. We keep it that way. You have to answer three questions in order to get in. But it's a nice place where people talk about creeps. And we also just talk about pop culture and things like that. And the new- yeah, news and stuff like that. The- It is the best place on Facebook. It really is a super awesome, supportive, cool group of people. It's the only reason I go to Facebook. True fact. That is true. On Instagram, we're at What a Creep Podcast. We're also on Twitter, but on Twitter, we're at Creep Pod because somebody had What a Creep for 10 years and never used it. Creep. <laughs> we have a basic old timey email, what a creep podcast at gmail.com. If you have comments, suggestions for creeps, for non creeps, or if you would like to get some stickers, we have those. We will drop them in the mail for you. I have a new batch going out soon. We've had people asking for them, Sonia. It's very exciting. This is all a good day. And why don't you tell them about our website while you're at it? Yes, you can go to whatacreeppodcast.com and it's everything you've ever wanted to know about our podcast, but everything you've ever wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask. And it's got a link to our merch shop where you can get t-shirts and masks and tote bags. And it's the best. The masks are great. I love my mask. I wear the maybe next year one all the time. And I thought it would be out of date by now. It isn't. So I'm still wearing it. (laughs) And the shirts are super comfy. True fact, all of that. All right, Sonia, are we ready to talk about our creep today? It's another Canadian creep. We've been going yes. to the Great White North. I think it's because <laughs> it's a tundra here where I am in Brooklyn. 
Uh, yeah, and this one, he's a real super creep, y'all. So trigger warnings for this one are rape and sexual assault. So if that is upsetting to you, like take care of yourself, maybe skip this one or just skip to the non-creep at the end. Um, because this one, he's trash and I've, it's a long one too. So stay with me, my friends. I'm going to talk about Peter Nygaard. And I'm going to try really hard not to say Nygaard <laughs> the whole time. Nygaard. Sarsgaard. Nygaard. <laughs> Margo, do you know who Peter Nygaard is? I know he's some sort of fashion exec and he likes mullets. Very true. The mullet alone makes him a creep, but he's done much worse. So Peter Nygaard, Nygaard is a Finnish, Finnish Canadian fashion executive and a real super creep. More than 80 women from the Bahamas, Canada, and the United States have joined a class action lawsuit accusing him of rape, sexual assault, and sex trafficking. 80? 80. Jesus. That's more than Cosby. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. And not, by the way, it's not all of them. There's, there's definitely more. So sources for this episode... The Secrets of Nygaard K- Key, sorry, The Secrets of Nygaard Key on Dateline. There's a documentary on Discovery Plus called Unseemly, The Investigation of Peter Nygaard, NBC News, CBC News, Toronto Sun, Vanity Fair, and Wikipedia. So here we go. Peter Nygaard was born Pekka Juhani Nygaard in Helsinki, Finland. On July 24th, 1941, I think that means he's a Leo. Sorry, my apologies to Leos. His parents moved to Canada in 1952 when he was 11 years old, and he he really grew up in poverty, so no running water, no heat. Uh, they were eventually able to move to Winnipeg, where they opened a bakery. Oh. And yeah, in ni- I would love to open a bakery. <laughs> In 1964, he graduated from the University of North Dakota with a business degree. And after college, he got a job as a manager for an apparel manufacturing company called Jacobs. He decided he could do it better. He took out a loan and bought Jacobs. And this is how he started building his empire. In early interviews, he talks about working in the garment industry. He was really focused on women over 25 Fashion wise, let me make that clear. (laughs) Fashion wise, very focused on women over 25, you know, and he would say like women who are smaller on top or maybe and bigger on the bottom uh, involved a lot of polyester, like people in Winnipeg called him the polyester king. Uh, He expanded his company in the United States in 1978. And then he went international. And that's when the company started making millions of dollars got real rich real fast. Nygaard established um, his Nygaard Apparel Manufacturing Company, and then later he rebranded it as Nygaard International, and he had his headquarters in Winnipeg. Hmm. And his practical clothes for working women were available at Sears, Dillard's, is that how you pronounce it? Mm -hmm. Dillard's? I never shopped at a Dillard's. You could get it at Costco, and then he had his own boutiques. And then he eventually opened a world headquarters in Times Square in New York. And um, I mean, it was the huge billboard with like a picture of him. By the way, I'm going to mention this later. Google what this dude looks like. You'll be like, what the fuck? Basically, like the fact that anyway, we're going to talk about it. He he's something. Let's just say. And he was always focused on building a a company, not necessarily a fashion label. Like he was very focused on manufacturing, uh, the software to like manage your inventory and all that jazz. He was never about like setting trends and making a big splash at fashion week and having models walk the runway. Like that was not his jam. He was really more about like the, uh, the garment part of fashion, not necessarily the fashion fashion, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So Nygaard International made half a million, half a billion dollars in sales, you know, because once again, not everybody wants to be like walking the runway. We need practical clothes. He's not stupid in that way. He's correct. He hired supermodel Beverly Pill, Peel to be sorry, everybody. I am. This is Theraflu Sonia. <laughs> Theraflu Sonia is here. He hired 
hired supermodel Beverly Peel to be the face of Nygaard International. We're going to talk about her more in a little bit. But he really put himself front and center in these campaigns, in his marketing campaigns. He was obsessed with just creating this image of success. So like fancy dinners, private jet, and he just surrounded himself with beautiful women, kind of like Hugh Hefner, actually. Um, or Calvin Klein. Or Calvin Klein. Or Holston. Holston did that. They they all have a... Coterie of women around them. Yes. 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 He even did an episode of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. With Morgan Fairchild. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the host of that show. What was his name? Robin Leach. Robin Leach. Robin Leach. Robin Leach. But Robin Leach. Fairchild. <laughs> I follow her on Twitter. She's great. She's a delight. Oh, that's good to know. Uh, yeah, so he did that episode. And he was, he, like I said, very obsessed with his image. He uh, was also really obsessed with looking young Mm -hmm. and he would uh, on the reg have himself injected with human growth hormones and testosterone. So like most normal male Joe Rogan type, like he did that. Totally. (laughs) Yes, he is. So most males sit at like the 500 level and he was at like 1100 and yeah, this made him angry, really angry angry was he was a say. very very angry person and Nygaard he would just, smash Nygaard smash everyone get mullets <laughs> make them cool <laughs> he would just blow up and yell at employees all the time employees would say that if you didn't format an email correctly or if you didn't respond to an email within 24 hours he like he would bl- flip his fucking lid like he would scream so hard his face would turn red his veins would be sticking out he's spitting you know i wrote in here he had a hair trigger temper Uh, (laughs) Uh, and people noticed that this temper would increase after he got one of his treatments Mm -hmm. so very obsessed with his looks and his public image and he would even have his meet his legal team send out cease and desist letters to people who would make fun of him on social media. <laughs> mm, dude, you look like I'm I'm serious. Google him, man. Like you look like that. Your people are going to come for you. Um, he was always wearing these like shirts that are like really unbuttoned, like way down low. And he has this like long blonde hair that even when he was like too old to have that kind of hair and it was like a a mullet and um kind of like a Siegfried and Roy yes kind of vibe um you know something that you would be like 70s club look and he kept that look well into his 70s the and the fashion industry and designers they really never saw him as like one of them cuz like i said he wasn't really a fashion designer so much as an apparel company. And even in Winnipeg, he was seen as kind of a buffoon with terrible taste. <laughs> this uh, That is the a cowboys quote. cowboys in from, Winnipeg didn't appreciate him? No, no. Apparently, <laughs> this is a quote from like one of his victims in, in Unseemly, where she was like, he was seen as a buffoon with terrible taste. And I was, by the way, Unseemly's really well done. It's on Discovery Plus. I watched it through Amazon. And one of the things I like about it is his victims throw some shade. Like <laughs> they're just, they throw in these little digs like, like that. He's a buffoon. He has terrible taste. Like he's very ugly, like blah, blah, like just shit like that, that, you know, he's like, fuck you. Right. It is. But, well, we'll get to that. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so while he's building his company and projecting this image of wealth, he was also, repeatedly sexually assaulting women like a lot so in 1968 uh winnipeg police charged him with a sexual assault the charges were dropped because the victim was too scared to testify against him Mm -hmm. this is going to be a reoccurring thing in 1972 a woman who actually worked for him at nygaard international she was like a secretary she was 19 he went into her records got her home phone number and called her at home and asked her to go to a hockey game. And he picked her up at her parents' house, once again, 19. Mm-hmm. And he showed up and he's wearing like a full-length fur coat. <laughs> and she said, 
it would make Liberace cry. <laughs> <laughs> My dad would have kicked his ass out. Totally. After the game, he asked her to come up to his place for a drink, and then he'd take her home. And then once she got inside, he he raped her. Okay. In 1979, a 17-year-old girl was out at a club. She was leaving. She was trying to get a cab. He offered her a ride. And he was like, we need to stop by my office and pick something up. They went into the office and he raped her as well. In 1980, he was charged with the rape of an 18-year-old girl in Winnipeg. Uh, and once again, those charges were dropped because she refused to testify. And then it was later revealed that he used company funds to pay her off. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, a story about that, about this case, ran in the Winnipeg Free Press. And dozens of women called in and started sharing their stories of of Nygaard and one woman said that he raped her while she was on a business trip with him but then management at the newspaper pulled the plug on running any more stories about him because it was costing the paper millions in advertising yeah and Ugh. the former publisher of the newspaper he confirmed that story he's like that is 100% true that happened that's what with um Harvey Weinstein Yes. Because the Miramax bought all those ads and all the papers and yeah. all the magazines. And so the, he threatened that all the time. Yeah. And I think this is like a reoccurring thing here. There is this fear of women um, know how powerful he is and that he they're not going to be believed. And if they do like put if they are like telling their stories, they they're afraid of the repercussions because he is very powerful wherever also, he is. It's a time, 1980. I mean, everything's yeah. like, well, were you wearing tight jeans? Were you flirting yes. with him? Did you get in the car with him? What did you think was going to yeah. happen? There's a lot of blaming. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. What did you think was going to happen when you went upstairs to have a drink? Like you, you get what you, you know, you deserved it. You know, what were you wearing? You were asking for it, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So, um, Yeah. Okay, in the 1990s, he settled a sexual harassment complaint from three former employees. And here's the thing. They settled. All three of them got $20,000 oh, to split. They were threatened, basically. And the HR department didn't do anything. They didn't do any investigating or anything like that. They treated sexual harassment complaints as a nuisance. Because they, they work like, for the company. Yes, right. exactly. They don't, they don't work they don't for... Give a shit. Yeah, they don't give a shit. They were just about protecting the company. So, um, Nygaard was always surrounding himself with these beautiful women. Like I mentioned, all of his appearances, there'd be like these six gorgeous women like standing around him and he would call them his girlfriends. And several of them, in fact, were, they were sex slaves. They were constantly being threatened, intimidated, sexually assaulted. Uh, one of those girlfriends, is uh, a woman named Celebrity Brookie Harvey. She was 20 at the time. And she said that they were expected to travel with him everywhere, go to pamper parties. And I'm going to explain what pamper parties are here in a bit. And they were expected to have sex with him. And if you don't, you better find someone who will. Like, he turned his victims into recruiters. Oh, Christ. Yeah. And he targeted young girls and who had no support system. Like most of them, like maybe their parents were uh, dead or they were estranged from their parents and their family. Like they had nothing. Mm -hmm. They had nowhere else to go and they believed that nobody would believe them. Mm -hmm. So he um, he raped Harvey not very long after she was, you know, introduced to him. And she actually got pregnant and she wanted to keep the baby and he talked her into getting an abortion and investigations revealed that he very often would get his girlfriends, and I'm going to put that in quotes, pregnant, and he would pay for abortions. This is a real thing. I'm not making this up. He would pay for abortions and then take the stem cells and have them injected. Oh, for God's sakes. Because he believed it was the fountain of youth. He actually had a stem cell lab in China that he invested millions of dollars in this is a real thing that happened. Oh my God. What an asshole. Isn't he the fucking worst fucking creep? 
oh my god he this i wasn't expecting that story when i started this research i was like are you fucking kidding me it's a thing oh he sucks okay uh, a woman who used to work for him in the finance department said that one time he summoned her to his house and she found him in a hot tub. Ugh, eye roll. And when he got out, he was naked. Surprise. Um, and she was like, well, that's enough of that, right? So she like took her computer and left. She was like, clo- like slap the laptop down. <laughs> Run. I, like left. Yeah. And then she confronts him and she's like, um, that's not appropriate. And, you know, and he does this, like, what's the big deal? We're all born naked. Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just fuck dick. you. What's the big yeah, deal? F- such an asshole. Um, she said a few months later, she was summoned to his house again. She was doing some work. And he offered her something to drink. And a couple of sips into that drink, her vision became fuzzy. Oh, she couldn't feel her hands. She passed out. Oh, and God. he And he raped her so awful it gets worse actually they're all worse it's all terrible in 1993 uh, a girl named april Tilek. she was a miss canada winner uh she wanted to be a model actress that was her big goal and she was friends with peter nygaard's niece and nephew and she was doing all these pageants and her um friends the nephew and niece got peter nygaard to like sponsor her clothes for the pageant so she would go on these pageants and she'd be wearing nygaard clothes and all that stuff uh eventually he asked her to model for their signature line and he offered to fly her to winnipeg uh for fittings and she was told that he would put her up in these executive suites and instead she was taken to a suite that was in the winnipeg factory he literally had fucking bedrooms built in the factory like a fucking psycho yeah oh my god so so she goes into this room and the like he goes in and closes the door and she's like um what is this i thought i was staying in like you know a hotel and he told her like you're going to be staying here with me and she says i'm not doing that and she was locked in the room with a deadbolt a deadbolt he locked her in this room oh my god and she tells the story about like i kept mentioning i'm friends with your niece and your nephew and she's and this is absolutely like a punch in the gut she said i was hoping he would realize i was human jesus christ. by you mentioning know, that i'm friends you know but yeah if you build it at your factory you don't need to hire a staff for it there's not going to be anybody to be a witness no maids yeah. or you know what i mean or bell well here's or the thing like i mean you have your staff <laughs> Somebody was complicit in this. So yeah, I'm going to tell you in one. So um, he didn't respond to her saying like, I'm friends with your niece and nephew. And she tried to get away, of course, and he raped her. And she was 20. She's 20. At this point, he's 52. Somebody brought a tray of food to them. Like unlocked the door and brought a tray of food. Like somebody people were complicit in this they were like yeah it's my job to bring him fucking food while he's imprisoning women like it's disgusting god's sakes so this person brings a tray of food he gets to eat she gets an apple and something to drink and of course the drink was drugged and she has no idea what happened to her when she was blacked out um the next time the person came to deliver food they had actually left the key in the deadbolt. I would like to think they did that on purpose, but maybe not. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was able to get out. She called the nephew and he helped her escape. It turned out she had been there for three days. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, my God. And when she got home, she told her family and they were scared for their lives. Yeah. They didn't press charges because the nephew's like, my uncle owns the police. Yeah, he's a billionaire. He owns the police. They're, he's the big yes. star. He's the one that's, mm-hmm. yeah, they all kowtow to him. It was like OJ. OJ yes. was friends with the police. They didn't, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's awful. I'm telling Ay. you, this one, this one is a real fucking monster. A monster. 
Another one of his victims uh, was working as a model for Penthouse Magazine at the time. She really wanted to not do nude modeling anymore. So a friend had introduced her to Nygaard. Um, he said he could get her into catalog modeling. And this was one of his things. Like he would promise people jobs. Mm -hmm. And um, he said he was going to take her to his estate in the Bahamas for a photo shoot. I'm going to talk about that estate here in a little bit. Um, so she gets to the Bahamas and this woman tells her right when she gets there, you're going to have to have sex with Peter. It's what he expects. Yeah. And the woman's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And it turned out she tried to leave and she couldn't leave. He had her ID. Oh, she no. was on an island. And he, it's a fucking like, I keep using the word estate. It's a compound. It's a compound and it's gated. Like there's a huge gate, like fucking Jurassic Park. They don't open it unless he tells them to. Bob wire on the fences, like all this stuff. It's a fucking compound. She oh couldn't have got God. out if she wanted to. She's basically, so she's locked in this room and eventually one of his people like went and got her from her room and brought her to his room and then he raped her and he did it over and over for four days. Oh no. Yeah. And then eventually she was able to get away and she didn't go to the police. She's like, the police won't believe me. I pose nude for pen Yeah, for yeah, penthouse. you're in penthouse. So yeah, you deserve yeah. it. Ugh. Yeah. I feel so bad for her. That's terrible. So awful. So here's the deal with the estate. It's in the Bahamas. It's 4.5 acres. It's it's got lagoons and little rivers. And I mean, it looks like a little paradise. You can like swim like up these rivers like you would a path, right? To like, I'm going to take this little river and swim up to the bar or his disco or, you know, whatever. And he had these structures that look like Mayan temples. Like, it's massive. Um, he actually, it's an island that he shares with another billionaire named Louis Bacon. And we're going to talk about him in a little bit, too. Um and like, like, like I said, it, it was on the lifestyles of the rich and famous, like Oprah did a show from there once, like all kinds of shows were done on this thing. And he would throw these parties all the time that he called pamper parties. And it was a place for aspiring models to relax and have drinks and they could like have a delicious meal and have manicures and massages. But these parties were really just a way for him to have sex with women, whether they wanted to or not. And when I say women, I mean girls. These were girls. Oh, um, the age of consent in the Bahamas is 16. Mm -hmm. A lot of these girls were local. They could be as young as 13. And he was always on the local news in the Bahamas as someone who was doing good for the community. He was always like giving money to like politicians and of things like that. For, yes. He's right? breaking the law. He needs people. Exactly. On his side. Yeah, exactly. So they're seeing, but they're seeing him on the news as someone who's like, he a super savior. loves the Bahamas. Yes. Mm -hmm. They thought he was a good person. They thought he was safe. And it turns out he's a monster. So these poor girls go to these parties and they're getting their nails done and they're not old enough to drink. But he's like, it's a private party. You can drink if you want. And they like have a drink. And eventually they would end up in a locked room with Nygaard. Yeah. So one girl was 14. And she told this story in Unseemly in the documentary. She said that she walked in and there's like this huge dinner table. And he's at the head of the table. And he is just surrounded by 20 drop dead gorgeous girls. You know, and she's like oh my gosh like I would love to be one of these girls they're so beautiful and they look like they have everything mm -hmm. and he's like you come sit next to me you know come and taps the seat and uh she like I said 14 she's never had a drink before and they just keep filling up her drink filling up her drink and at some point he gives a bartender like a like a mm, like a little sign and they put a pill oh, for God, no. in her drink. And and this is his thing. He does it. This is like, oh, yeah. Oh, so she God, instantly feels terrible. I fucking hate this guy so much. He's the worst. Oh, I'm telling you, legit fucking monster. She says she wants to leave. He offers to walk her out. He just walks her to his room, locks her in there. 
you know, and rapes her. And if a girl says no, it was the staff's job to convince that girl to change her mind. And if she didn't change her mind, she would be drugged. He would give the sign like a, you know, and, and this happened to a lot of girls, a lot. And these were young girls. Once again, no means to fight him. They didn't even have a way home. Right. You know, he, he and he would promise them jobs. They were very poor. Some of them were lived in houses that didn't have electricity or running water. And, you know, they just, they had nowhere to turn. And he, he was very, very politically connected in the Bahamas. They couldn't go to the police. It just, and it happened over and over. Mm-hmm. He, like I said, he provided a lot of financing to the government in the Bahamas. He had a lot of influence. Police politicians were bribed. Uh, In 1980, I'm sorry, in 1998, a 19-year-old tourist um, from here, from the United States, was in the Bahamas. She was staying at a nearby resort. She was uh, with her mom and her mom's boyfriend. And she started taking tennis lessons. And the tennis coach said um, if she wanted to, Nygaard's estate has this beautiful tennis court, like right by the water, and they could go and they could play there sometime. And she's like, wow, that sounds really fun. So they went, they played tennis. She met Nygaard. She was like, that was fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. And she loved, but she loved the tennis court and thought it was beautiful. The next week, the tennis coach again was like, do you want to go back and play again? And she's like, sure. So they went. She played tennis, and then the tennis coach just disappears. Oh, my God. These fucking assholes. I know. So he's he's a recruiter, obviously. So Nygaard assures her that, like, you can get a ride home. It's fine. He invites her to stay for dinner. Um, and then at dinner, he says, hey, like, I know you're leaving soon with your mom and her boyfriend, but if you want to stay here at my estate, you're welcome to. You could play tennis. You could mingle with the guests. Like, I have plenty of room. You could stay in this cabana. And she's like, well, gosh, that sounds amazing. How lucky am I? No, no, no. Yeah. So, you know, she she leaves that night, like goes home. Her mom is like, that sounds fine. You know, I'm not blaming anyone, by the way, when I say that. So she goes back, like, and she goes to stay there and within the first day she quickly realizes she's not free to come and go as she pleases. He took her ID. They wouldn't open the gates without his permission. And her first night there, she was having drinks with the other guests and she started to feel dizzy and oh, weak and God. he raped her. Oh Jesus Christ. Yeah. <sighs> she, she got out of his room afterwards and she hid in her cabana for days. Like she's like, I, She's like, I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. And after she came out, he just did it again. And he did it repeatedly. She was on that island for one month. Oh, my God. Yeah. So um, after she was able to get away, she was so ashamed. She said she felt stupid. She was embarrassed. She didn't tell anyone. And she just tried to pretend that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, and in the interviews she's just sobbing and she's like i'm so ashamed that i didn't come forward she's like i feel like i could have prevented more rapes if i had done that but she was just she's 19 right and you're and like and who's gonna believe you and it you go yeah you know you feel like you're being re-traumatized yeah. by doing it and ugh. yeah i have nothing but empathy for her i absolutely I do too. yeah for all, all the all, all of them so she says during one of the assaults She's like in Nygaard's room and she's trying to fight him off. And that at one point, um, Nygaard's teenage son named Kai came knocking on the door looking for his father. And like, she said that her heart was absolutely broken for Kai. This is, I mean, she had met him on the island. Like, they're not too far apart in age. And she was like, this poor kid doesn't know that his dad's a fucking monster. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, in the Dateline special, there's actually this footage of Kai and this victim. They get together and they chat and like they hug. And he's just like, he. you can see that he is so genuinely 
horrified about what happened to her and it just breaks your heart and like so kai has actually legally changed his last name from nygaard to his mother's maiden name bickle um and he has participated in the investigations of his father and he's in both the documentaries that i watched about nygaard and he said this is and he's like he's almost crying and he says i'm just sorry you know and I have to he? do that. It, now he's probably in his 30s. Oh, okay. But it, it, but um, he he really didn't know right, at the right. time that these things were happening. And now he's just like, I want the survivors to know that I believe them. And he's like, we should be all be working together to compile evidence. And he says, it breaks my heart to say this about my own father. Wow. Like, and he's like, and he he's been clearly nothing but amazing like trying to help like build trying to help build the case against his own father which wow. must be crazy hard so Nygaard has 10 children with eight women these are 10 children that they know about like Kai 100% believes there's way more kids out there that they don't know about so he didn't <laughs> harvest all of them for their no okay no their stem cells okay yes um so um he has three that's like kai bianca Aaliyah, and then there's um micah jessar scarlet and a young one named czar it's like x-a-r i don't know these Finnish names are tough. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. And then there's a, a girl named Micah and there's one named Scarlett. And, but here's the, here's the one I'm going to focus on now. One of his children is actually like a result of rape. And that is the child from supermodel, supermodel Beverly Pill, Peel. So why am I struggling with her name? Supermodel Beverly Peel. So, and she's, by the way, gorgeous mm -hmm. gorgeous like go look her up she was in like some of those george michael videos in the 90s she was a legit supermodel super beautiful um she back in the 90s she was bought brought to his beach house to talk about working together he wanted her to be the face of nygaard international um and then shortly after she signed her contract he followed her into the bathroom and he raped her oh yeah once again even now we're talking about a model who's really famous she was still like no one will believe me yeah right yeah she and she was stuck in her contract for three years oh, she's yeah. about to get married and it turned out she was pregnant she didn't even know the baby was nygaard's until the baby was born when the baby was born because for those who don't know, Beverly Peel is African American. I believe her husband also African American, and the baby was born, and the baby is half white, like looks, you know, not right. like her husband. Looks like Peter Nygaard. Did and the husband know? No, oh, she hadn't she... told him. Oh, man. So clearly, like, I don't know why that what happened with her and her husband, but eventually they split her and her husband, which mm -hmm. is absolutely awful. I don't know if it's because she didn't tell him what really happened or I don't know. Um, and she let Nygaard have a relationship with their son. So, you know, Trey, that's the name of the, the son. He, he actually has like a lot of fond memories of his dad, like dad teaching him volleyball and stuff like that. But eventually she told him the truth. And he's the one who encouraged her to come forward wow. and tell her story, which an, another, like, that's a good kid. Yeah. You know? Um, so he encouraged her to go public and join the cases to bring Nygaard down. And he, he seems like a really good kid too. Yeah. yeah. Oh so here, so, yeah. So here's what finally brought him down. All of this, all of this is going to tie together. I promise. So, a young, naked, very scared victim got out, a woman, girl, got out of his Bahamas compound. And she was found on Lewis Bacon's side of the island. So Lewis Bacon is a billionaire hedge fund 
hedge fund manager and he shared this island with Nygaard and they were very different people. So like Nygaard is like his his estate is his compound. It's like, it's just like, yeah, like everything looks like a Mayan temple and everything's gigantic and loud and parties. And like Lewis Bacon is like very respectful of the land. And he, he's, he's more conservative. He's a conservative, but he's a hedge fund manager. Right. Of course. You know? So they have very, very different tastes, but they had like this shared roadway. And at one point there was this like puddle that was forming in the roadway and they got into an an argument over who was responsible for this puddle. This is ridiculous. It had just led to 24 different lawsuits oh, between God the two sakes. of them. And over 10 years, they were fighting. And Nygaard, during this time, hired henchmen to firebomb cars on his property, break into Bacon's office, and hired investigators to dig up dirt. At one point, he hired like a filmmaker to make fake videos that made it look like Bacon was a member of the KKK. Oh, for God's sakes. Yes. That's crazy. This, I'm telling you, not where I thought this story was going <laughs> when I started this research. So um, at a certain point, the filmmaker who was making these videos was so terrified of Nygaard that he gave all the footage to Bacon and then went into hiding. He was so afraid of him. So, um... Was he in the bushes hiding? Like, yeah, he's like hiding on the property. <laughs> he's dressed as a bush. <laughs> you can't see me! You can't see me! <laughs> so, cut back to this girl who's found on his property obviously lewis bacon is very concerned about what's going on over there he doesn't he he didn't know that this was going on over there but he's very concerned he can't go to local authorities he knows he can't so he hires his own investigators and they start looking into nygaard and talking to people around the island those investigators also start working with like the fbi and then the local police in Toronto and Winnipeg start doing their investigations. So now everyone's investigating and everyone's sharing info. I feel like this is so true in so many cases. The minute other organizations start working together and sharing information, you're fucked. Yeah. Like so many of these crimes depend on you not sharing information. Mm-hmm. And here they are sharing their information. So with the help from all these victims finally sharing their st- sharing their stories. I'm sorry, I said finally. I made it sound like finally. <laughs> no, but no, they, they start sharing their stories. Nygaard's son Kai helps them like dig up as much as he can. Nygaard was actually arrested in December 2020 in Winnipeg, Canada. The day after, he was charged with federal indictments in the United States. And he has agreed to be extradited to the U.S. He also faces sexual assault charges in Canada. There are 80 victims who have joined a class action suit against him. They claim that he used violence, intimidation, bribery, and company employees to lure victims. And he did. That case, yes. And those cases are on hold until uh, until the criminal trials are complete. So right now... Nygaard has been charged by Toronto police with six counts of sexual assault and three counts of uh, forcible confinement. Um, And these all took place between 1987 and 2006. He is also facing charges from the Winnipeg police. That was a 10 month investigation. Uh, These were all like sexual assaults. Eight women are involved in that. On top of that, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Two of Nygaard's own sons are suing him. And they claim, and this is fucked up, that he hired a sex worker to rape them when they were teenagers. <sighs> he wanted to make a man out of them. Teach him the ropes. Yep. So according to docu- court documents filed in the Southern District of New York... You don't fuck with them, by no, the way. No, no, no. In August 2020, two of his sons, they're not identifying themselves. They're just going by John Doe 1 and John Doe 2, allege that they were sexually assaulted when they were 14 and 15 years old. It's pretty awful. Um, they're claiming that um, 
and that they used um, money from the company to do it. So I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that Kai had something to do with bringing that information in because he had access to like company details. Um, so Peter Nygaard has obviously been denied bail. He is detained in Toronto as he awaits his trials. You could Google those pictures. Mm -hmm. They'll make you feel, they'll make you feel good. His like shitty mullet is all gray and oh, he looks terrible because he's not getting his stem cells. (laughs) Is he calmer because he's not getting the, the, uh, probably, you know, jabbed into him? Yeah. He says he's innocent. Of course. Of course. Yeah, and he is penniless. The company what? has filed the company has filed for bankruptcy. So that is our huge fucking creep, Peter Nygaard. Oh my god, this is someone that our listeners have been asking about for months and months and months and months. Yes. Uh, Sonia, good job. I know this wasn't Thank you. easy. Do this one went plate by the way, I cut some stuff out cuz I was like Mm, it's the it, it reminded me of the McAfee creep episode I'll just say that yeah okay <laughs> real nasty shit if you know what I mean right. wink <laughs> um, yeah he's a fucking monster fuck this guy I oh hope he dies God. in prison well I, fu- I hope he's found guilty of everything first and then dies in prison right, like right. Robert due process Durst. yes All right. he's trash well, fuck him. Sonia? Yeah. Do you want to hear about somebody from Canada who's not a creep? I can't wait. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Andrew Fox was born June 9th, 1961. He is known <clears throat> professionally as Michael J. Fox, the oh, actor. I love him. The star of my one of my favorite movies of all time, Back to the Future. That's yes. one of the ones I can watch that movie over and over and over again. He's so good. He's done. He's so great. I remember his Alex P. Keaton. Yes. On Family Ties. He's just. Oh, he came to America in the he started his career in Canada in the 70s. He was known. He first became huge when he became. We played Alex P. Keaton. And then he was in Back to the Future and the other movies he's done. Secret of My Success, Casualties of Wars, The Frighteners, which is what we were going to do. And then I was like, oh, fuck, no, I can't do that. There's there's so many. He, we we have done an episode of Darking Out on The Secret of My Success, yes. which is not very good, but a really fun movie to talk about. So if you want to go find that, enjoy. He's just an amazing performer he's very he winsome he's very charming i remember those mm-hmm. pepsi commercials and i don't drink pepsi but i was always <laughs> like I'm, I'm a diet coke girl but i was like what? okay i get it you know he's he's super charming he made spin city and it was a big deal yes. that he made it in new york he's a new yorker now he's lived in new york for a long time with his wife tracy Pollen. they have four kids i said he's from they met on Met on Family Ties. They did. He, they were a couple, and then they broke up, and he, then he started dating Courtney Cox. But in real life, he married Tracy Pollard. They were Pollard, yes. excuse me. Um, he did. He took the middle initial J because it's already a Michael Fox. Um, yes. But, but he took Mike. He did Michael J. Fox in honor of Michael J. Pollard, who's a character actor and like a million different things. He's won five primetime Emmys, two SAG awards. He was appointed an officer in the Order of Canada, which is like the biggest honor you can get as a Hmm. Canadian. He's on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But in 2000, the world was shocked to find out that he had Parkinson's disease. And he had started developing symptoms when he was shooting the movie Doc Holliday. Doc Hollywood, excuse me. That's a really good movie, by the way. a really cute movie. And he... Started, he goes to New York, and when he was first diagnosed, which was in the early 90s, he he was drinking a lot. He had a lot of depression issues. Of course, he was very young. He was 30 years mm-hmm. old when he started getting sick. Yeah. But since then, he's kind of come around, and he has created the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And it's really, they're about research. They are about finding causes, being able to detect things as early as humanly possible, 
it's their that's what their mission is it's what they're passionate about and he spends a lot of time with his organization it's one of the top rated charities that are out there he's worked with muhammad ali he's worked with so many people he he had a bestseller with a book called lucky man because everything he's been through he still considers himself a lucky person Hmm. because such a good one he has a, a great marriage he has really amazing kids my former editor-in-chief at modern bride her son went to school with sam fox and they were like oh. best friends and said that like michael was just like the real deal like just so nice oh my gosh i love this so, so much down to earth i think they spent a lot of their time in the hamptons and he can't travel as much as he used to when he was he actually perform didn't perform excuse me but he was he met with um a a senate appropriations subcommittee in 1999 and in order to show the effects of what he deals with if he doesn't have his medicine Mm -hmm. he showed up and he was shaking and he was and uh Rush Limbaugh was one of the people to think like, oh, it's just a big fucking act. And, who, you know, and he's such an asshole. He's such a piece of shit. But yeah. anyway, the Michael J. Fox Foundation, like I said, it's one of the top rated charities, especially celebrity charities. You know, people have really good intentions, but they don't always follow through. Right. And, you know, we want a cure for something like this. We want and it's yes. taking away our best and our brightest. And so he's trying everything he can to, to do that, to fight for the cure. But overall he, he feels like he's been lucky. He's had a good career. He's had a really good life. And that's our not creep this week. Canada's Michael J. Fox. What an amazing pick. I love Michael J. Fox. I, my sister and I, we had little buttons called the Alex P. Keaton fan club. (laughs) And we would watch that show every week and just where I just I was like, he's going to be a movie star. And he's like yeah. five foot nothing. And he's, you know, yeah. oh, also he plays guitar. He had to stop playing guitar. He just can't. Oh. And he was really good at it. If you see uh, it, what's the movie I just mentioned, um, Back to the Future. Back to the Future. They, yeah. they, he made them show his hands because he could actually play. Yeah, um, he's he's just a great reputation and he's really fighting the good fight and he handles it with class and he's human. I mean, he's not a perfect, yeah. nobody's perfect. And then, you know, he admits right. that he has his down days and he has his times. Where he feels a little sorry for himself, but mostly he's extremely close to his wife and his kids, his family. And they, that's just why he's our not creep this week. I love, love, love. I love a good non creep. Don't you? Me too. Especially after this one. Oh, this one yeah. <laughs> well, if you enjoy the sound of our voices and if you've made it this far, you absolutely do. We also co-host a show called called Dorking Out, where we dork out about movies. And what are we going to be dorking out about next, Sonia? We are getting ready for the Winter Olympics. So we're going to talk about the cutting edge Yay! with Ad- <laughs> with Adam Risky from F This Movie. Adam hasn't been on in a little bit, so I'm so excited that Adam's going to join us to talk about this movie that's been on our list since the beginning. Yeah, that's coming up. Yeah. Um, Please, if you have ideas for creeps and especially non-creeps, because sometimes that's the hard one to come up with, follow us on all the social media things. We love it when you use the Annie Potts gif. We got one from Ghostbusters or be clever and pick something for yourself. Once again, our email is whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. If you would like some stickers, join our Patreon page if you want to support the show for bonus content and fun things like that. And uh, Sonia, where can they find you? You can find me at the Sonia show.com and the Sonia show on Twitter and Instagram and the TikTok, where I'm there to ruin it for the kids. How about you, Margo? You can find me at Brooklyn Fit Chick for uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'm also ruining it for the kids with TikTok under my <laughs> own name. <laughs> And my site is brooklynfitchick.com. Thank you all so much for listening. We'll be back with a new episode. In the meantime, stay warm, stay safe. Don't be a creep. Be a creep. Thank you for listening to us talk about creeps. You can follow us at What a Creep Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But don't follow us too closely. You can email us your creepy stories at whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. But please keep your dick pics to yourself. 